Peace, neighbors was popping with the population. Top of the half this team. Hope everybody's having a Macklin Monday. Um, man, let's get straight to it, man. Uh, we are currently, we currently just started this um, neighborhood 40 days, 40 nights fast, juice cleanse fast. And I'm going to give you more specifics on the day one episode, which drops tomorrow, Tuesday. But I wanted to give you guys a, a quick do's and don'ts of what to do and what not to do before and during a fast. So, and some, some tips to help you throughout your, your, your course, which, you know, I'll be, ex dis I will be displaying throughout the uh, series, but, you know, I just wanted to give you guys a reference uh, episode for you guys to always come back to whenever you start your journeys of fasting, whenever you go on a fast. And this could go, this, this, this relates to, this is universal, so this could relate to a water fast or a juice fast. It doesn't matter. It could be a 40 day, which what I'm doing now, or it could be a seven day or three day, 40. Like this is also, it's universal for any time, the length, or either fast, you dig? So let's get into it. I'm currently on day two. Day one intro vid will be uh, airing tomorrow on the show. So stay tuned for that. I know what you're thinking. What is the objective of fasting? What is the objective? Why are you quote unquote starving yourself from eating solid foods? <laughs> well, the objective of fasting is to give your body a rest. It's not starving yourself at all because you're actually feeding yourself nutrition, especially on a a juice cleanse it's not excuse me it's not starving yourself at all it's giving the body a rest and a break from just eating solid foods you know so you can actually spend that time spend less energy digesting and spend more and, and channel that energy into healing the body of chronic diseases illnesses whatever you got whether it's a skin condition whether it's the cancer whatever it's, it is the ultimate shifting of energy from your di from digesting into healing because a lot of times more often than not the reason why a lot of us aren't healing um, is because we're always eating and a lot of us and in this society we tend to overeat we eat three meals a day we're, we're overeating in those meals we're eating to our, our stomach and stuff and then we're still feeling hungry after those meals because we're not getting the nutrition that our body needs. That's why like you could eat something super heavy and then in three hours you're hungry because you gotta ask yourself. Because a lot of us operate in a space of filling ourselves up and thinking that is fulfilling us when we should be looking at consuming something as what am I getting from it? Is it giving us true nutrition? I am like I could be more, I'm more full, fulfilled um, and satiated when I eat a, a side bowl as to pose eat, you know, sandwich or, you know, a sandwich or some type of, or lentils or something like that. You feel me? Because that a side bowl is packed with nutrients and minerals that the body needs to operate, you know, to have, be energetic, to heal, to detoxify, to cleanse itself, etc. And Newsflash, our bodies are constantly in a state of cleansing itself, whether it be the lungs, whether it be the skin is constantly detoxifying itself, and you know, just everything, our hair, you know, our, our heart, our blood, everything is constantly detoxifying itself, our lymphatic system, all, the whole nine, you know. So, with that being said, that is the objective of fasting. No, you're not starving yourself. You're starving yourself from your undisciplined ways of living, you dig, and not being in control of what you can put, what you're putting in your mouth, if that makes sense. So, all right, let's get into these do's and don'ts, neighbor. So the, so the, so I wrote them down for you guys. You feel me? And you know, here's some of the do's. I'm gonna go through the do's first. Number one, plan a fast at least three to four weeks ahead of your fast or ahead of time don't be impulsive when you are about to fast it's something that is very important this is something that is very serious 
You know what I'm saying? It's it's a very spiritual, fun journey, but it's you got to take it seriously. You know what I'm saying? Don't just impulsively go into the fast. You want to take your time. You know what I'm saying? Plan it out. You know, and what I mean by plan it out, meaning when are you going to start the fast? What specific day are you going to start the fast? How long is this, the fast going to last? Are you going to do juice or water fast? Are you going to include herbs in your fast? Um, you, 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 you want to know these things before you go into it so you don't be scrambling everywhere, uh, losing your mind trying to find out what, what, you know what I mean, how, how you're going to go about the, ju the, the fast in general. And um, also you want to know which juice combinations you're going to be picking. Are you going to do mono fruit, fruit fasting, or are you going to do uh, a fruit combination, meaning Mono fruit. When I say mono fruit, I mean single fruit. So, are you just gonna drink straight grape juice and straight watermelon juice, straight apple juice, or are you gonna do combinations, meaning apple with, you know, what I'm saying watermelon or watermelon with lime, and grape with lime, and you know, what I'm saying, are you gonna do combination, or you, or are you gonna do both? You feel me? I tend to do both. You know, I do lean more towards the mono fruit and just two two ingredient fruit juices. Um, and I, it really just matters which fruits pair well together. You dig? Which fruits pair well together will determine what you should be combining which fruits with, especially during a fast. And I did put that, I did put up a little chart of some great uh, fruit combinations on my on my Instagram. So go check that out, neighbors. So that's number one. Plan your fast out ahead of time. You know what I'm saying? Number two. Oh my, yo, these are, this is, all right, each and every step is important, but you know it's gonna sound like I'm saying one is more important than the other, but I'm not. I'm just passionate about it. Let's get it, neighbors. All right, number two, leading up to the fast. Leading up to the fast. This is extremely important. Leading up to the fast, eat more clean. Eat more clean. This is not leading up to a fast is not the time when you that you take to say like, oh my God, I haven't ate this food in months. You know what I'm saying? So I'm about to go on this fast, so let me just pick out. No, this is not the time for that. You ain't think about eating this food for months. For months. You ain't think about eating this food for months, B. Maybe a year. And you wanna decide to eat this food right before a fast? Come on now. Eat cleaner foods, you know what I'm saying? Lean more toward the more closer and closer you get to the uh, fasting date or when you're about to start this fast, eat cleaner and cleaner and cleaner. So I'm gonna give you an example. Your first week, you know what I'm saying? You could still eat cooked foods, you know what I'm saying? But try to eat more wholesome plant-based foods. You know, foods with less ingredients in it, less preservatives and all that other stuff in it. Try to eat more wholesome grains and stuff like that. And alongside with your fruits and vegetables. Your second week, you know what I'm saying? You got two weeks before you start the fast. Then you, you know what I mean? You try to cut off the, the, the cooked foods, you know what I'm saying? Also, in that third week, the first week, you don't want to eat a lot of fried foods, try to eat more baked foods, etc. But that second week, you know what I'm saying? Try to cut off the, the cooked foods and eat more sauteed veggies, you know what I mean, raw veggies. Um, you mainly want to saute, like if you're going to eat kale, try to saute the kale because kale is a little bit harder on the digestion, harder to break down because it's super starchy, etc. Try to eat, you know what I'm saying, like your sauteed veggies. Try to aim for more romaine or arugula um, based salads. If you're gonna eat like callaloo or collards, try to, you know what I mean, saute those. Um, also with your onions as well. Try to eat sauteed veggies if you can. And then like, you know, your raw salads. And uh, of course with your fruits, you could juice those or you could eat them raw, you feel me? Now, the last week, I say week to week and a half entering into this fast. You need to be eating strictly straight fruits. You need to be eating straight fruits. Straight fruits. Drinking and eating straight fruits. And you can juice your veggies as well. So green juices. But you mainly want to eat fruits and or juice and or juice fruits. You can eat and juice your sprouts as well. But like I said, that, that week, that last week. Leading up to that fat, leading up to that fast, straight fruits. All right, that's that's the key. You don't want to shock. The reason why you want to eat more cleaner the closer you get to a fast, because you do not want to shock 
your, your digestive system. You don't want to shock your digestive system. And this time leading up to the fast, this is your body catching up to your spirit. Like, all right, this is what we doing. We, we eating some, all right, we eating that. We getting more life in the body. All right, I see what you want. All right, now you mean you want to heal now. You really want to heal. All right, so let's get healing. Let's, let's, let's get it. Let's get to it. You feel me? That's the, the reason why you want to eat cleaner going into the fast because you do not want to shock your digestive system. You feel me? You know what I'm saying by eating all these the heaviest foods possible before you go into it because when you do stuff like that that not only shocks your digestive system but you really don't heal especially if you just do a three-day juice cleanse fast you're not gonna heal in those three days you feel me you're not gonna heal at all because your body's gonna spend so much time digesting it takes it takes a good amount of time to digest meats it takes a good amount of time to digest you know your starches your heavy starches and stuff like that so you want to stay away from those things leading up to that last week of the fast you feel me try to eat more of your fruits and veggies sauteed veggies or more so on the fruit side juice your veggies you dig so that your body can truly catch up to when you're about to enter this fast and truly join your spirit in healing you dig let's get it neighbor so Leading up, number two, number two, leading up to the fast, eat cleaner. Don't pick out, eat cleaner. Number three, these are some, some key tips to deeply insinuating the, detoxif the detoxification of the body and the cells. One, if you have a sauna or you have access to a sauna, tap in with it. It is immaculate for your skin. It's great for opening up your pores, um, opening up your sinuses, and um, for pulling, you know, what I mean, cellular waste out of the brain and you know, out of the, you know, what I mean, out of the skin and all that other stuff. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's great for opening up the pores, getting you sweating, and you know, when you're sweating, that's another form of detoxification. That's another form of your of your skin releasing toxins out of the body. You dig? So. Get in the sauna, get in the sun, get your sun bathing on. I mean, sun is great for your skin. It's great for energizing self as well. And, you know, it's just it's one of the greatest uh, skin foods we have. You feel me? So get in that sun, get in that sauna. You know, this one is a major key as well. You want to make sure you are dry skin brushing, dry and wet skin brushing. What is dry skin brushing? You have a brush or a bristle. You know those brushes you can use to shower with? This is what you should be using during the fast. You should not be using these soft ass, you know what I mean? This is a towel, but you get my, you catch my drift. Don't be using those soft washcloths because they are not doing anything for the skin. You know what I'm saying? They're not. The purpose of washing up, the purpose of, you know what I mean, scrubbing the skin and putting soap on the skin is to actually take off the dead skin cells off the skin and exfoliate when you when you use those regular unexfoliating washcloths you're not exfoliating at all so what are you even doing you're just rubbing soap on you but your 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 skin is actually taking in all that soap and all those chemical products you're using on the skin so you know get some dry skin brushing get some netted cloths and and you know skin brush you know what I mean? Use the brush for dry skin brushing and you can use it in the shower and use the netted cloths for, you know what I'm saying, like when you're using it, when you're applying soap on the rag and, and you know, skin brushing that way. You know, those are, that, that's some key, those are some key factors in getting rid of eczema and skin issues within the skin. You know what I'm saying? Getting rid of issues within the skin, you dig? And, you know, just opening up the skin and unclogging the skin with all these chemicals in it. And... Also, I do encourage you guys to get a shower filter. Get a shower filter. Why should you get a shower filter? I will probably explain this in another episode further on in the uh, in the in the, uh, in, in the series. But it is important because if you I have a shower filter, and you know, man, the shit that comes through this to that tap water is insane. That's why you shouldn't be drinking tap water because there's so much chemicals and residue that comes through there if you just you'll you'll see what you want you'll see once you get a little shower filter it's only like 60 bucks it comes with the filter pads and all that that'll last you six months you change the pad every six months you'll see how dirty and the shit that that we're showering in. 
you feel me? So try to get a filter, a shower filter, and um, you know, it's a great investment, you know. Cause that that that's another thing. Order that we're showering in has a lot to do with has a plays a good part in why we're getting all this eczema and psoriasis and stuff. Cause we're showering in acidic water. We're showering in nothing but chemicals and stuff like that. You ever get in a shower and jump out that motherfucker from and, and mind you use all these chemicals on your skin on top of the 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 the, the water the chemicalized uh, water that you're showering in and, and get out the shower and feel dry as shit. My point exactly. My point exactly. So that that is because that's what that's doing. That the the water from the tap the tap water from the showers, the the chemical from all the, these chemical based uh, soaps and shampoos is doing nothing but drying your skin out, drying your hair out, the whole nine, which leads to all these skin issues. Also, deep tissue massaging. You want to ooh get in there. You know what I'm saying get in there, especially the head area. You know what I'm saying. Especially the head area. You want to massage the head. Massage the head. You know what I'm saying? Massage your forehead. Massage every part of your body. You know what I'm saying? If you got a lady, you know what I mean? Have a massage all over you. You dig? Feel me? Because it's, it's really getting that cellular waste out of those tough spots out the body from the head. The head is very important for this. Make sure you're massaging the back of the neck, the head area, the temple. You feel me? Bottom of the chin, the neck. Your, your muscles everywhere. Make sure you're massaging for at least 30 minutes every day. You feel me? Your legs everywhere. To, you know, further um, insinuate the detoxification of every part and ounce of the body, nigga. So let's get it, man. Deep tissue massaging. That's a key one, man. That's, that's a gem right there. Stretching. Stretching is important. Yes. Stretching. Get your stretch on. Your Stretching, stretching, stretching is getting those toxins out of the out of the body, out of those systems. It's, it's helping that lymphatic system push those toxins through the tubes and through the lymphatic system out the body and excrete it out the body. You know what I'm saying? All these things I'm mentioning are ways of helping the kidneys, the um the lymph and the lymphatic system to get all this waste out the body. You know what I mean? Excrete it out the body. You know what I'm saying? Get your natural exercising on. You feel me? Get your natural exercising on. So, you know what I'm saying? Get your calisthenics in. You feel me? This is not the time to be doing and lifting heavy weights. You know what I'm saying? Don't lift heavy weights. Get your calisthenics on. Get your body weight movements up. You feel me? Plyometrics, stuff like that. You feel me? You don't want to be uh, lifting heavy in the weights. Uh, also, Earthing and stargazing. These are very important. Forget, you no, know, earthing is very important for getting that positive energy from Mother Earth herself, herself. And stargazing is very important for, or just looking out at the night sky is important for, you know, whenever you can't sleep. You know what I'm saying? Whenever you can't sleep, just go outside. You feel me? Go outside at night real quick for like about a good hour or 30 minutes. Look out at the sky. Look how beautiful the stars is looking. Right, look at God's creation, you feel me? And just, just you know what I'm saying, soak it up. Uh, try not to think too much. Just think about nothing. You feel me? Think about nothing. Just look at the beautiful night sky. Look at the art in the sky that, that God has created. And fully soak it in. And, you know, you know, just take that in. You know what I mean? Try to diminish all the negative thoughts. Try to diminish all the things that, that are stressing you out. Because, listen, we in the neighborhood, we don't stress. We're too blessed to stress. You heard? We don't do none of that, especially when fasting. Listen, release all the stress, release all the negative thoughts when you're fasting. And, and nothing matters in this fast but getting right, healing, and you know, releasing. You know what I'm saying? When you do when you allow that to happen, when you allow the release and the detoxification to happen, you will be amazed at what thoughts do not last in your head. You feel me? You will be amazed. Um, another important thing is writing and journaling. You feel me? Listen, when you're fasting, I'm telling you, because I've done this, this probably about anywhere from my 10th to 15th fast. Listen, every time I fasted, I can say that's when I was like my most creative. In this time of fasting, you will get so creative. Whether you're a chef, you're going to get all, this is when all the, 
dishes and meals is gonna hit you when you are content creator. This is when all the content is gonna hit you when you're uh, <laughs> when you're like a uh, when you like to work out. This is when all the workouts is gonna hit you when you're just thinking of different ways to make money or any way. This is when all the ideas is going to hit you is during a fast. Your mind's gonna get so creative. It's gonna be insane. So you want to make sure you're journaling all these thoughts down. Uh, journaling, journaling all the positive thoughts down and also journaling all journaling everything in within the body this is when you're fasting this is when you should be get tapping into your high level observation bags you know what i'm saying and observe the body journal how you're feeling from day one day one to day 10 and then day 10 to day 20 day 20 you know what i'm saying it depends on how you're feeling if you're doing three days journal every day if you're doing seven days journal every two days or every day if you want if you're journal if you're doing 20 days do every five days if you're doing 40 days like me i'm gonna be doing every couple days maybe every six to eight days you feel me so journal how the body's feeling journal your thoughts and write them down you feel me so that you have because you'll be you're going to be super productive after this fast and during the fast as well awesome all right so last and final one this is very important and crucial neighbors crucial i'm going to touch on this on some later episodes but listen i need you guys to feel me on this one this is about breaking the fast now i'm going to touch more on this towards the end of the fast but i want to touch on it now because it's a big do you feel me when you're breaking the fast you want to break your fast with living foods do not break your fast with cooked and cooked starchy and um, fried foods don't say all right I'm about to end this fast all right so now I can finally pig out the same way you enter the fast is the same way you break the fast but in a reverse way you feel me so you say you started off eating cooked foods and then leading into eating fruits now that now when you're breaking the fast you're starting off you, you, you enter out of the fast eating raw fruits and then you lean onto your veggies then your cooked veggies sauteed veggies and then you can eat your wholesome greens and stuff like that but listen day one you want to break your fast with coconut water and then later on in the day coconut milk and then you could eat your fruits you know what I'm saying more so day one you want to more so lean towards your uh, hydrating fruits like your watermelons your melons period your watermelons cantaloupes honeydews papayas um, grapes cherries you know uh, and things of that nature you're very hydrating fruits your mangoes etc and then day two you could add your apples in there you know you can add your your pears stuff like that you know some more like you could add coconut pulp like you know what I'm saying stuff to that nature and then you can add your green juices more, more you can eat you could drink more green juices and then day three you could start eating your salads, you know what I mean, preferably your romaine, arugula salads, and then, you know, you can add your your, your sauteed kale, sauteed veggies, etc., etc., then day four and five, uh, preferably day five, you can start eating your wholesome grains, like your quinoa, stuff like that, and then day six, you can go on to whatever you, whatever you eat. Mind you, I'm, I'm plant-based, so, you know, I'm, I continue on the plant-based diet, so. Now, those were the do's to not those are the things that you should do during a fast one so I told you plan your fast out two eat clean three I gave you some tips on what will help the detoxify the body alongside whatever your body's already doing four, four writing and journaling your thoughts and how you're feeling and just your creativity five breaking the fast you dig so all right now, here are some of your don'ts. This is what you do not want to do. 